Good afternoon. My name is Kevin Zhang, Student Council President, and on behalf of my classmates, I would like to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2020. As a class, we are grateful for all the opportunities we have been given. Today, we bring our Claiborne experience to a close and move on to our high school experience, and we're happy to share the celebration with you. We could not have done it without your support and encouragement. Hello, Dr. Patslaff, faculty, parents, and the graduating class of 2020. I am Matthew Chen, and I have attended Claiborne School for nine years. Throughout these nine years, Claiborne has played an important role in shaping me into the person I am today. I would love to start by thanking my parents for taking care of me, supporting me, and also putting up with my antics. You have always been with me and keep pushing me to be my best. I love you both so much. I would like to thank my teachers for teaching me valuable lessons and preparing me for high school. You have all helped me mature and grow both personally and academically. I would also like to thank Mrs. Corwin specifically for giving me an interesting history and inspiring me to be the best person that I can be. Over the past nine years, Claiborne has given me many amazing opportunities, but with every opportunity, I've had to take risks. I've learned to try things that aren't guaranteed to produce a good outcome, to get over my fears and take the risk, and to always get back up after taking a risk. Neil Gaiman once wrote in the Graveyard Book, if you dare nothing, then when the day is over, nothing is all you will have gained. One of the things I've learned at my time at Claiborne is that it is important to try doing things that might not always produce a good outcome. For example, the student council officers have to campaign to be elected into office. Several students will be on a ballot, but only one for each office will be elected. When I signed up to run for treasurer, there were nine other students that I had to campaign against and fear overwhelmed me. It was a fear that held me back and more specifically, the fear of failure and the fear of disappointment. However, an even stronger fear, the fear of regret pushed me to run for treasurer. I knew that I had nothing to lose if I ran, but I had everything to lose if I didn't. Becoming treasurer was such an amazing experience. I couldn't have be more grateful that I decided to take the risk. At the end of the day, you only get what you risk. I also learned to take risks and get out of my comfort zone to get over my fears. In a Christmas play, many of my classmates took roles acting, singing, and narrating. In third grade, I didn't have a part because I was too scared. However, during the play, one of my classmates had a bloody nose. Just before he had to narrate a scene, he asked someone to narrate the scene for him. Then he ran off to get a tissue. I had a fear of public speaking, but I had to do something. The scene was coming up, so I grabbed the paper, narrated the scene the best I could, and ran back to my seat. Taking on my fear of public speaking helped me learn something. I learned to be bold, to be brave, and to face my fears. It was an invaluable lesson that I would have never learned if I didn't get out of my comfort zone. Besides learning to take risks, I also learned to always get back up. In seventh grade, I was overwhelmed by the homework, responsibilities, and the expectations that I had put on myself. I took a risk by putting high standards on myself, but I only focused on the result of my work. I was beat down and even worse, I felt inadequate that I couldn't achieve the standards I'd put upon myself. I felt like giving up at times, but I knew I had to keep going. So I took a deep breath and I focused on improving myself and being the best person that I could be. 
when you are stuck, beat down, or worried, just take a deep breath and get back up. To summarize, nudge yourself to take risks, but make sure they are smart, calculated risks and not reckless. Don't pass up an opportunity because it might not go your way. Remember to be brave and face your fears and to always get back up. Finally, the graduating class of 2020. We made it. We've all been so supportive, funny, and great friends. From the basketball games to the trips to Costa Rica and Australia, we've been through so much together. Sure, we've had our ups and downs, our highs and lows, but that's because we aren't perfect. We've had our arguments, disagreements, bad experiences, and good experiences, but we stuck together through it all. And I know that you are all amazing, capable, and talented, and I'm so thankful to have shared my school experience with you all. Clairborne has been much more than a school to me. It has provided me many opportunities to grow, mature, improve academically, but most importantly, Clairborne has given me a second family. Being able to come to school, be greeted by close friends, and be surrounded by people who will encourage and motivate me is something that I will be forever grateful for. It has been a privilege to be able to grow up with many of my classmates and grow closer to them. We all grow and mature, but we stay the same at heart. We are still the same kindergartners racing to the snack table after getting out in Foursquare. But we have also become older, independent, and more sensible. Thank you all for making every day more enjoyable and for being such great friends. You all mean so much to me to be on this journey with me, and I really think that you will all do something great. This fall, I will be attending Flintridge Prep, and I will deeply miss seeing you all every day. I hope that you guys have an amazing time at your respective high schools. And remember to take some risks. Congratulations, the class of 2020. Hello, teachers, peers, and Claiborne family. My name is Madison Burrell, and I started attending Claiborne in the first grade. On my first day of school, I remember instantly feeling welcomed and in a safe environment. But I also vividly remember trying so hard not to cry in front of all the other kids so I could look cool. I felt so alone once my parents said goodbye and left me there in the classroom. However, everyone was very friendly and I was able to make some awesome friends. Aside from forgetting everyone's names as soon as I met them, I knew everything was going to be fine. I truly felt a part of the Claiborne family. I have been taught so much from everyone in the community and feel the need to share some of them with all of you. There were a lot of things I needed to learn about myself and others that would benefit me so much later on in the, my life. One of the big issues I had trouble dealing with was perfection. For a very long time, I was obsessed with being perfect in almost every way possible. In first grade, I truly believed my hair had to have no frizzes or loose strands in order to achieve happiness, or that my crochet stitches had to all look exactly the same to get the smooth manufactured look. I was completely obsessed with everything being flawless, which ended up slowly wearing away at me. It was the little things that would eventually get to me over time. I had to learn and go through many challenges to give up that idea of perfection. The most mind-blowing thing I was taught was that you can't be perfect because everyone is bound to make mistakes in their lives. This was also one of the most important lessons. I remember this happening in my fifth grade math class. I would never answer any questions out loud in fear that I would get the answer wrong in front of the whole class. The last thing I wanted was to embarrass myself by getting the answer entirely wrong. It took me a while to understand how important it was to make these mistakes and get out of my comfort zone. That 
trying new things maybe isn't that bad after all. Nudging myself a little more led me to the things I love and enjoy doing today. I would have never in a billion years thought I would like Harry Potter, but I decided to actually try and have fun during Harry Potter week, and now I'm obsessed with wizards and warlocks. Embarrassment, discomfort, it's all a part of the process of learning. You can't possibly get everything right. I remember in kindergarten, we had a talent show during our music class. All the girls were planning on singing That's What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction for the show. They were all obsessed with that band at the time. At first, I agreed to join them. But in actuality, what I wanted to do was sing on my own. I had been preparing a song beforehand, but didn't want to make a fool out of myself. I hadn't sung in front of anyone before and was hesitant to do so. To this day, I'm still not completely sure what made me do it, but suddenly I found myself in front of the whole class singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I decided to push myself and it ended up being all right. I performed my special song in front of the class and felt happy for the rest of the day. So push yourself once in a while, make those mistakes, Answer that question in class. Learn. Why stress on being perfect when you can have so much fun instead? Understanding perfection and what it is helped me shape myself into who I am now. Humans are naturally supposed to make mess ups and mistakes. We're humans, not robots. We can't possibly do everything effortlessly and without fault. It just isn't what we're wired to do. Stressing about that perfect hairstyle or those couple percent away from 100 on your test is not going to get you very far. Being perfect isn't just doing everything correctly. Perfection is about being yourself and its best version. Susie Kassem is an American poet, writer, and philosopher. She covers a lot on the topic of being yourself. She says, be yourself. An original is worth more than a copy. In other words, why be someone else when the original is just as great, if not even greater? Be the person that makes others laugh. Be the one to stand up to bullies. Be the one who changes the world. Be lovely, be kind, but most importantly, be the best version of you because that is perfection. Thank you, Claiborne, for giving me great opportunities and events along with providing me with the materials and amazing teachers that would help prepare me for high school and pursue my passions. I always felt so safe and that I was in a space where I could express myself freely and without judgment. With all of this, I have also learned to be kind and respectful towards everyone I meet and to treat others the way I want to be treated. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for enrolling me in Claiborne so that I could be subject to all these great experiences. I also say thank you to all of my friends for making me smile and laugh until my stomach hurts. It's always good to know I have people to cheer me up when I'm feeling down, whether it's dancing to music while we walk to Starbucks with Mrs. DeVosto for P.E., acting silly during a trip to the movies and dubbing ourselves the Haunted Clowns, or going to a Wendy and the Boys concert, one of the most famous boy bands to exist, during our trip to Pali. I'm going to remember all of it. And finally, thank you to the mighty class of 2020. I wish each and every one of you the best of luck going further into your futures. Although you probably won't need it with all the potential you already have. So congratulations, class of 2020. You made it! Hello students, parents, faculty, and Dr. Patslav. My name is Matthew Reinling. Throughout my nine years here at Claiborne School, there is one very important thing I have taken away from here. It is to learn from your mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, it's a part of life. When you inevitably make a mistake sometime or another, 
Focus on what you could do next time to prevent the same mistake from happening if given the chance. Do not be ashamed of a little error here and there because everybody does it one time or another. I can still vividly remember the time in third grade when one careless mistake led to a much worse outcome. We were taking a math test. It was not terribly difficult, so it was not a failure to prepare for the test, but instead something much more clueless. Despite the many signs around the classroom stating, always double check your work, I proceeded to ignore the signs and hand in my test, not realizing what impact it would have. When I was handed back my test, the first thing I noticed was a large F written on my paper with a circle around it. I was so shocked, and when I looked through my test to see where I went wrong, well, I may or may not have skipped an entire page or two. Needless to say, neither I nor my parents were very happy with the final results. From then on, I always remembered to double-check my work. All of my life, I've been a procrastinator, and there's no denying it. I always try to find anything else to do than my schoolwork, even if it's just sitting on the couch twiddling my thumbs. It might be nice pushing things off, but it'll come and bite you in the back later on. That math homework you only had a few questions left to do? Guess what? You do not realize that there was an A, B, C, D, E, and so on. Not too much later and it's already midnight, you're giving your everything to focus on what is ahead of you and trying not to fall asleep at the same time. This, thankfully, has only happened to me a few times, but it's a few times too many. So I now know to try my best, keyword try, and start my homework early enough so that I have some extra time to relax afterward, maybe study for any upcoming quizzes I have. I will say that I've gotten better at not procrastinating, but I'm still nowhere near perfect. Every year I've been at Claiborne, I participated in the Engineering Design Week. There was one time in fourth grade where my partner and I made it into the finals. We had high hopes until we saw what the eighth grade had produced. Needless to say, we did not win. After many years of trial and error in these competitions, I finally made it into the finals again in my last year here. On the first day of building, we already made good progress, but there was still room for improvement. The next day, we took our design we had the day prior and perfected it. It was a big morale boost when we made it into the finals. But some of the other designs seemed pretty daunting. Finally, the big day came for the finals, and seeing what everyone else had built did nothing to make us feel better. It was finally time for the eighth grade to come up and test their products. In the end, we won the entire competition, and after many years of lack of success, it felt pretty good to have finally won. By taking what did not work so well from the beginning, and fixing that, it led us to success. My nine years here at Clairborn have taught me more than just learning from my mistakes. Every year, teachers make up some sort of fun way to teach us students good ethics and morals. I remember the student council would always host the buddy game so that we could get to know our school community better and become more friendly to each other. I also remember the Earth Day games, where we had many small activities teaching us about the proper place for certain trash items. Certain things like that that helped us teach and instill proper etiquette and behavior in the students without us realizing it, because we were too busy having fun. Claiborne has shaped me into an overall better person, and I'm very grateful to have spent my years of grade school here. I have learned not to be defeated by making mistakes, but to keep trying and improving. Thomas Edison is the perfect example of a man who learned from his mistakes. As he once said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways something won't work. In the process of perfecting the light bulb, he made countless errors, but proceeded to learn from his mistakes and correct any problems he encountered. Thomas Edison took what he noticed was wrong with one model, and in the next time, perfected the previous problem. If we all do that, then we're on our way to success. I cannot express how thankful I am to have attended Clairborn School. Although I'll be sad leaving a place I formed so many memories, I'm also very excited to start the next chapter of my life at Flint Ridge Preparatory School. I'm very grateful for all of my friends that have carried me through the ups and downs through my nine years here at Clairborn. The memories my friends and I have made here together are priceless and I would pay anything to relive them. My favorite overall experience from Clairborn would be, without a doubt, the 2019 Costa Rica trip. I made so many fond memories and experienced so many things I'll never be able to relive again. I got to spend time with all my friends in a tropical paradise, try unique foods, and participate in many fun and thrilling adventures. The teachers here at Clairborne have taught me so many important lessons and have made learning fun for me, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Most importantly, 
I would like to thank my parents for allowing me the opportunity to have attended Claiborne all of these years, go to Costa Rica, and go to my first choice high school next year. We all take it for granted, but all of our parents sacrifice a lot for us just to be sitting here right now, well, let alone all of the recreational activities we all know and enjoy. My Claiborne experience is one that I will forever remember, and I cannot express into words how thankful I am. I will be taking with me many very important lessons that Claiborne has taught me. Claiborne has instilled into our minds the code of ethics, whether you realize it or not. Responsibility. It is very important to manage our time and work and make sure we get done what is asked of us. Spirituality teaches us to be more selfless. Citizenship is important because active members of a community or make it thrive and prosper. It is important to be honest because all lying does is cause more trouble in the long run. Last but not least is respect. Honoring those who do so much for us is just one small way to say thanks. The Claiborne Code of Ethics has really shaped me into an overall better person. In closing, I would like to talk about the people I spent my years at Claiborne with, the class of 2020. The class of 2020 is a very unique group. It's like no other that has graduated and will not be for the ones to come afterward. The time we have all spent together allowed us to form memories that will be forever kept safe within us. Through all the highs and lows, we have persisted together and gotten through. We have always been there for each other no matter what size problem came up. It will be sad to see everyone I have spent so much time with split up and go their own ways, but I know they're all headed for a bright future. Congratulations, Class of 2020, on all of your accomplishments, and I wish you all the best of luck in high school and beyond. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Pasloff, teachers, parents, students, and the mighty Class of 2020. As some of you may not know who I am, I am Zari Chaminlia. I'm on student council as their secretary, only five feet tall, and I love to eat. I've been at Claiborne since kindergarten, and after nine years, I'm really sad the class of 2020 is leaving Claiborne. Claiborne has taught me so much from an intellectual level and to just growing as a person. Claiborne is such a positive and welcoming community, and no matter what year you come, you're guaranteed to make friends. Even though Claiborne taught me many things that were positive and kind-hearted, I also learned that failure is part of life. It may bring hardships, but it is also a learning experience. I failed a lot during my years at Claiborne, and even though that may seem disappointing, it is a blessing to me. It is a blessing to me because how do we learn anything if we don't struggle or fail at it first? I'd rather not say failure during this essay because failure means a loss, the lack of success, and to me, that's not what it is. To me, failure is just a slow way to get to success. You learn from the failure and gain knowledge. Success is like a freeway. At certain times, it can go really fast, and other times there could be a traffic jam, and the freeway could be stuck or going really slow. Either way, most of the cars on the freeway will eventually get to where they want, whether they decide to stay or get off the freeway. It can be a lot of work to gain success, but if you find a way something doesn't work, they're closer to success. Albert Einstein said, a person who never made a mistake, never tried anything new. I remember in seventh grade, I tried very hard to be on student council, mainly because it looked fun and knowing they created fun ideas for the school seemed exciting. Going into, going into seventh grade, I decided to run for student council secretary. I prepared my speech and hung my posters, but sadly lost. I had run for seventh grade representative and also lost that. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't sad and disappointed after that, because the journey to success can do that. I didn't give up, and I ran again that year for secretary, and I did everything the same, except I had more faith in myself and believed that I could win, and I did. I could have given up after I lost the first time, but I didn't. And after every time I didn't succeed, I learned something new. Going back to some of my earlier memories when I was five years old, I started playing soccer and I was pretty good at it. I would always get down on myself if I messed up or didn't do what I thought I should have done. I am, however, still kind of like that in soccer. I try not to because I know messing up is okay because no one is perfect and you can learn from it, but sometimes it just happens. I've messed up more than once shooting, taking on players, or even passing, but I keep trying and practicing and eventually I will be able to do most without messing up as often. If I had given up when I made my first mistake, I would have been done with soccer on my first day. I am at an elite level now because I learned from all the mistakes I've made. Michael Jordan said, I can accept failure, everyone fails at something, but I cannot accept not trying. You can't learn if you're afraid or don't want to fail. I've always had a little trouble with math as it wasn't my forte. 
and have always had to work a little harder than others to keep up. From first to eighth grade, I never let a bad grade get me down, and that much, that much, and never will unless it's a midterm or final. I may have failed some, but but also seeing what I messed up on, I practiced some more until I got as close to perfect as possible. The teachers and my parents have also been there if I ever needed help with anything because they they knew how much I tried. There may have been tears, but after many tries, you start to get frustrated and just need to get it out so you can keep on trying. Sometimes it took longer than others to learn it, but it was worth it in the end. I may not have succeeded with certain things in math at first, but with trial and error, I became pretty good at it. And while I still have to work a little harder than, than most, I can still succeed in it. Claiborne is an amazing school and has taught me so much on how to grow as a person. They've taught me how to treat others, public speaking, a lot of academics, and what kind of friends and people I want to have in my life. I'm taking away all the memories of friendship, teamwork, growth, and bonding I've made at Claiborne throughout the years. I will always remember the fun times at Pali, Spirit Days, the Oregon Trail, and especially my friends. Last year, I expanded my friend group to include some very interesting and really fun people to be around. I never got to know some of the class until this year, and I kind of regret that because they're all incredible. However, the one thing I will never forget that Claiborne has helped me with is getting over my fear of failing. Walt Disney said, everyone falls down. Getting back up is how you learn how to walk. Claiborne saw me fall down and helped me get up every time. And now that I'm graduating, Claiborne is going to have to let me fall down and get back up again all by myself. Claiborne has never excluded me and always made me feel like I belong. And I don't know what kind of person I'd be if I didn't go to Claiborne. Now that I'm going to high school, I will take everything I learned from Claiborne and bring it with me. I am so grateful for the family I've made here at Claiborne and will never forget the strong and mighty class of 2020. We wanted to find something to honor Mr. Millard, our former assistant head of school. We know he loved being outside in nature, so we picked something he would have liked. We decided it'd be great to provide a new ginkgo tree for the center quad. This tree was planted in a spot where it will provide shade for many years to come. It will also add to our annual tradition of playing in the ginkgo leaves. All of the students love this tradition and we hope we are adding to the joy of future classes of cougars. When I think about the class of 2020, your impressive and varied skills and talents come to mind. Some of you are exceptional athletes, some gifted students, some debaters, some dancers, some artists, musicians, and some wonderful friends. All of these are impressive and can lead to fabulous experiences for you. But I was wondering which of these skills will be the most important to you as you go through your lives. In one book I read, the author, David Epstein, talks about what's better to be a specialist or be a generalist. He concluded that in a very narrow game with fixed rules and an opponent that can't impact your game, like golf, being a specialist is better. You just have to be really good at the elements, driving, chipping, putting. No matter how your opponent plays, you're in charge of your game. But in a game with an opponent that can impact your game, being a generalist is better because you can adapt to the changes your opponent throws your way. Think of basketball, where a team who plays a fast break offense requires something different of you than a team who sets up a fixed offense. So what does that have to do with you if you're not going to join the PGA or the NBA? Well, I was thinking about this year, it, how it compares to these sports analogies. This year was something completely new. It felt like we were all playing blindfolded alien soccer. The rules were not clear and kept changing. We aren't even sure who our opponent is or who is keeping score. For that matter, how is score kept? And when does the game end? How in the world are we supposed to hone our skills for this new game when we don't even know how it works? Which skills should be practiced? How do we make sure we aren't wasting valuable effort in skills that aren't going to be helpful? Do we even have a chance? Well, as it turns out, you have more than a chance. You all know the secret to blindfolded alien soccer 
and to navigating a world with unknown rules and unfamiliar playing fields. You have become specialists in the skills that apply to all games and all situations. We've talked about these skills almost every single school day since you started here at Claiborne. These skills are on the wall behind you when you sit in the multi-purpose building each day for morning assembly. You've practiced these skills in small and safe practice zones and have tested them against some pretty big opponents when a lot was on the line. These are the qualities from our code of ethics. Honesty, respect, responsibility, citizenship, and spirituality. These are the skills you need for success in life. Your safe practice zones for these skills have been in playing four square at recess, doing your daily homework, deciding whether to pick up your trash or leave it for someone else, inviting someone to sit with you who was sitting alone, or admitting mistakes to your parents or friends. But you also got to test your skills in bigger situations when more was on the line. You had to decide whether or not to share a secret that would embarrass a friend, whether or not to cheat on a test, whether or not to post that cruel comment when you were angry, whether or not to get back at the one who hurt your feelings. I suspect you may even have experimented with what happens when you set these skills aside for the sake of being funny, trying to impress, or attempting to get out of trouble. And you have felt the feelings of regret, disappointment, or sadness that comes as a result. We all have. One of the most interesting things about blindfolded alien soccer is that the game doesn't end this year or next year. You're already off to a good start and you're getting better and better at it, but you're far from finished. The game keeps going. In this game, even when you make a mistake, you're invited back into the game to try and do it better next time. No one gets kicked out permanently. People keep referring to these uncertain times or an uncertain world, which is why it can feel a little crazy and like a new alien sport. But there is certainty in how you approach your life, even when it feels unfamiliar. You always have the choice to bring your skills to the game. That is what gives you control in the game and in life. When you choose to bring your honesty, your respect, your responsibility, citizenship, and spirituality to the game in a consistent and intentional way, you succeed. So class of 2020, no matter your interest, your choice of school, your college major, your future career, your life choices, I wish you all the best because you are prepared with the secret for your path. Claiborne is proud of you because we know that in the end, the medal they will hang around your neck when you win will say that you have found the secret to the game. You are a scholar and leader with heart. Congratulations, class of 2020. We will now present the diplomas to the class of 2020. Madison Barreau. Matthew Chen. 
Jaden Chu. Leah Drazik. Zaria Echemendia. Thomas Espinoza. Sophia Gokas. William Ho. Austin Hong Cyan Jones Alexander Lopez Raymond Marshall Andrew Pavel Roxy Plummer Kaylee Shang Raymond T. 
Tian. Jaylene Tseng Wendy Waite Kevin Zhang Barbie Zhang My dear eighth grade graduates, more often than not, when I remind a middle schooler that failure is a good thing, I get a response along the lines of, great, I won't study for my test then. <laughs> While I always appreciate your humor, I want you to understand that it's not the act of failing itself that's beneficial, but rather how you react and respond to it. If you view your mistakes with a growth mindset, you believe that with hard work, you're able to reflect and learn from them. Failure is not the opposite of success. In fact, it has been called an essential prerequisite to achieve success. By struggling or failing at something, you deepen your understanding and solidify your learning. Your brain quite literally grows stronger. If Thomas Edison hadn't tried and failed 10,000 times, he wouldn't have gained insight and eventually found the right way to make a light bulb. If Walt Disney hadn't been rejected by his job and told he lacked imagination, he never would have had the passion and drive to go on and make all the movies and parks we love today. If you can see failure as a learning experience and use it to drive you forward, there'll be no end to what you can achieve. Congratulations, I will miss you all. Dear 2020 eighth grade graduates, I've missed seeing you all so much this spring quarter. You just may be the toughest and most resilient class to come along in a while, and we are witnessing your strength, tenacity, independence, and self-motivation. You are ready to rumble and rise strong to take high school by storm. I want to leave you with a brief message about trusting yourself. Here's a statement of strength and trust from Brene Brown. She writes, when we deny our stories, they define us. But when we own our stories, we get to write the ending. Trusting yourself means to fully accept your story, even the mistakes or embarrassments. I encourage you to listen to yourself, listen to your past, Honestly examine who you are and stand in that truth without apology. I can see that you all have developed the tools to be able to trust yourself, 
to take charge, rise strong, and keep writing your own life. If you own your story, then you get to write the ending, and it can be the greatest story ever told. Congratulations, and here's to you. One crucial skill that can serve you well in both your personal and academic life is the ability to take initiative. Take initiative and get in the game. If you constantly wait to be told what to do, then you wait too long. Taking initiative means going the extra mile or going above and beyond your normal responsibilities to make things happen. When you go on to high school, you will be put in situations and given the resources to be successful. In order to be successful, you must take advantage of every opportunity and be on the lookout for ways to put yourself out there. Building strong relationships with family, friends, and teachers are important. Being a person that people want to genuinely be friendly with makes you and others around you feel good. It starts from the little things such as saying hi in the morning, and saying how are you when you see someone, to being polite and respectful, to expressing gratitude, and saying thank you, and being accountable and reliable. Building strong relationships with your peers goes beyond small talk. It requires genuine effort and takes time to achieve. In order to build those relationships, you have to take initiative by starting up those conversations and get in the game by putting your words into actions. Hello, class of 2020. Wow, what an adventure you've had here at Claiborne. Looking back on your elementary and middle school experiences, I hope you appreciate how far you've come and how much you've grown. You've met some challenges on your path and you've learned to navigate them in your own way. You've made choices that have brought you to where you are and you have many more decisions to make which will guide you farther down the pathway of life. You are growing older and will be making more decisions for yourself. Your parents have brought you this far, and they may still have a few ideas about what's best for you, but you know what? You are the one walking your path. Don't waste your time doing just what you think other people would want you to do. Do things because you know they are the right thing to do, or the most interesting, or the most exciting, or the best thing for you. Embrace that everything will change. That is what makes life so exciting. Give yourself space to grow, push some boundaries and allow your wings to spread. Allow yourself to be guided by your interests and your passions. And now I'm going to ask the impossible of a young teenager. Let people think you're weird and try not to care about what other people think. And do exactly that for others. Let them grow and find that thing they are passionate about. How boring would this place be if we were all the same? Be the most interesting person you know. Love the things that make you different. And love that which makes all of us different too. You have enough love in your heart for all this and more. Our traditional notions of creativity and imagination have to be challenged. To think that creativity and imagination can be boxed into the art world or limited to problem solving is doing us a disservice. Creativity and imagination are the domain of humanity. There's an argument that says to be human is to be an artist. And that's not to say an artist in the traditional sense. There are economists who have built economic systems that have lasted generations and benefited many people. There are lawyers who have developed arguments that have freed entire classes of people. There are engineers who have built machines that without a doubt are works of art. And moments of genius are available to anyone sufficiently inspired. We often don't feel inspired when we're put to the test. The reason for that is that Creativity and imagination cannot blossom in an environment of criticism, specifically in an environment of self-criticism. We get ahead of ourselves. So allow yourself the daydreaming moments when you just sit. You find creative moments. You find your imagination working when you really least expect it. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work according to a deadline. So we, we can't beat ourselves up when creativity and imagination don't come 
calling when we snap our fingers. We have to be patient with ourselves and we have to trust. I think it is important to listen to the people that have done great things when deciding how to set goals in life. When setting your goals, you have to decide what you want to do, who you want to be, and how you're going to get there before you begin. Theodore Roosevelt, our 26th president of the United States, said, believe you can, and you're halfway there. You've completed our requirements to graduate from Claiborne School. Now, each of you are at a new beginning. You may say that you have new goals, like graduating from high school. This is all true. But when thinking about your goals, consider the words of Albert Einstein. Learn from yesterday. Live for today. Hope for tomorrow. The important thing is to never stop questioning. The Shakers, back in the 18th century, had a saying, life is beautiful. It's not perfect. What an important distinction. When I think of perfect, I imagine people working on a project, and when it's done, they announce, it's perfect, don't touch it. Perfect implies complete, finished, as good as it gets. It's not a human quality because people are supposed to be always evolving and learning. So you don't have to be perfect. Just work on being your best and most interesting self. Strive for the satisfaction of working hard and being proud of what you can do. Be a team player. Be kind, just, fair, faithful, and honest. Practice empathy. Develop a strong wit. These are some qualities that contribute to a beautiful existence, and not one of them can be judged as perfect on any measurable scale. They'll just add up to making you a strong and resilient adult who ultimately will be comfortable with being yourself. And there is nothing more beautiful than that. Congratulations, class of 2020. Happy graduation day, eighth grade. I have written you a Mrs. Wright original to wish you well. When starting a journey, you prepare and plan for whatever is to come. You pack and research the terrain until you know it like the back of your thumb. But what if while you're walking, you can't find the perfect way? The road is grown over, a hazard is ahead, and you think, I've been led astray. It may not be what you expected, but you've prepared for moments like these. So you take out your ropes and look to the sky and begin climbing in the trees. From way up here, you can see a group behind you heading straight for a fall. And you have a choice to move forward with your plan or respond when they call. As a cougar, you learned that a helping hand you should always lend. So you choose to embrace this change in your plan, even though your years at Claiborne are at an end. You discover you enjoy this new view and looking out for those around. Just think, if you had given up, you'd be alone on the ground. So on your journey through this life, remember to do your part. Lean into the curves, pick up friends along the way, and always lead with your heart. Congratulations, I'm so proud of you. Dear eighth graders, I have enjoyed spending time with you and I've loved watching you develop your academic work ethic. Learning to trust your capabilities and knowing you can push yourself to do more reflects the outcome of hard work. Each one of you is capable and the hard work you put into whatever endeavor you undertake is never wasted. Working hard with a purpose is its own satisfaction. Naturally, we like to receive tangible recognition for the work we do, but sometimes the payoff is far in the distance. So you will have to work hard and keep walking the road toward your goals. Walking the road implies you have a destination in mind. You have a plan. Maybe you want to improve in a subject, develop a skill, join a team, or just get your essay written. The work you do to get yourself closer to obtaining your goals is valuable. Working hard builds stamina, and stamina keeps you going. Don't fear the work ahead. Just put one foot in front of the other and lean into it. I say farewell to you now knowing you are well prepared. You are ready for high school. You are ready for the road ahead. Just remember to keep working hard and I know you will do well. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Well done.
It is now my great pleasure to present to you Claiborne's class of 2020.